Dear S.J. Thomason, you are a terrible person. So for those of you viewing, there's been some advancements on the whole Thomason thing. If you don't know what I'm on about, I suggest checking out my response to her, particularly the end section, but if you don't have the time for that, then feel free to watch this short excerpt from a live conversation I had with her. Talking, focusing just on those who have, quote, aligned themselves with Satan. What finite crime could ever justify infinite torture? And I ask this as someone who fully understands the idea of rage and anger. I come from a perspective that the justice system is not about revengeful wrath. It's about, first of all, rectifying an issue if possible, and then also correcting the person if, if that is possible. Okay, um, let me but, let me answer that with your finite question, because I actually just wrote a blog on that. I've written blogs on all these mm -hmm. topics, actually, which is kind of nice that I'm able to draw from that. Um, it, you have to ask, you say a finite crime, but let's let's envisualize some of the kinds of crimes you've actually mentioned tonight. Uh, say, for example, a man rapes a child. I'm uh, a person you know, who's this... been raped. I'm, I'm, I'm fully happy to talk about my own experience there. I was raped as a child. Okay. What you, what you are forwarding is atrocious. Well, can I can I finish what my example? Don't are? use me as your example. I'm not using you as my example. I, I, know, I but... actually have a friend who also was raped as a child in the book, so I'm using her example. Um, so if a man rapes a child, uh, the child. It's it's going to be like a ripple effect because the child is never going to forget that. The, the, this is going to be something that influences the child's life, and then it might influence the child's children's lives. Uh, it might actually keep going down through society. It might influence all kinds of other people who also were affected by this person and the types of actions that both people took. So the person who committed the crime, who raped the child, actually committed something that's not a finite crime at all. Yes, it's it an is. infinite crime. One day oh. the sun will burn up. Yes or no? Yes. Our species will not live on. Or if we've traveled to other bodies, we might live on, but eventually all stars will burn up. There will be an end to the universe. Heat death will occur. Entropy will be reached. There will be a finite limit to our existence. Correct? There is a finite limit to the existence of the galaxies, the existence of the solar system, yes. Now, now I, I but I wanted say. to you say that, that God is, you, you know, God is also, when I mentioned he's transcendent and he's imminent, he's also in this universe with us as an imminent Lord, but he's transcended, he goes beyond it. And that's how we explain the whole idea of, you know, what uh, is beyond the universe, is beyond time, space, and matter, and that's God. So if we're with God eternally, we would also be in this unbounded time uh, away from time, space, and matter. That um, means the people who have suffered sexual assault suffer sexual assault in heaven, right? No, that's not what that means. But, but, but uh, where is the crime continuing then? If when they go to heaven, the pain inflicted upon them from the sexual assault stops, right? That's cut off and in the finite universe, and it no longer continues in heaven. Where is the infinite continuation? The, the infinite continuation is, I mean, it, it's, it's a crime against God. And so the infinite continuation would be in the infinite presence of I'm God. Sorry. There's not enough. If, if a rapist rapes somebody, you're committing an infinite crime because the infinite crime will always be in the infinite not mind of God. God can get over it for all I care. The issue was S.J. Thomason, online Christian apologist, attempted to bulldoze my lived experience as a victim of childhood rape as a means to posit her own ideas of how people like myself should feel on the matter, with a particular focus on the whole notion of hell and eternal torture for finite crimes. This did not sit well. I called it out and I felt it was so damn clear cut that she'd likely respond with silence in hope that it'd just die away. Instead, she held her entitlement. I first received a comment from the YouTube channel S.J. Thomason helped set up. The very next day, she tagged me the same comment on Twitter. What she was upset about wasn't that my synopsis of what she'd attempted to do had been wrong, but rather that I'd failed to mention how about 5 to 10 minutes into her trying to erase my lived experience, she said she was sorry to hear what happened to me. And I say sorry to hear because that's actually accurate. This is a common platitude to hear whenever someone opens up about something traumatic that happened in their life. It doesn't do anything to actually help the victim, not on its own anyway, as support needs to go beyond cliched one-liners. Its main job is to comfort the person listening as it gives them a sense of 
doing something. And that's alright, I'm not here to attack that. It scratches an itch people often get when they hear another person discuss something truly terrible that happened to them early in life. I need to be clear, that's not what I'm angry about. What I am angry about, however, is the way that people who do shitty things will then try to use the fact that they carried out this informal social interaction as grounds to excuse said shitty behaviour. Thomason, I don't give two shits if you felt sorry for me. That does not do away with the fact that you try to erase my experience to lecture me, or worse, lecture past me about how I should feel to try and win an argument. A lot of platitudes come across as insincere as, again, they're more informal rules or expectations of certain situations. But that feeling was not held by then effectively coming along and using said crap to try and justify was actually a pretty hurtful act on your part. Now I explained all of this and then about two weeks later, Twitter user Florida Line shared a screenshot of said post, commenting on the fact that she's done similar stuff to others. All of a sudden, a second Christian apologist reignites the original Twitter thread, only to admit halfway through that they didn't bother to find out what the issue was in the first place. They'd just seen an atheist say some rather scathing things about another theist, and assume that I was being the big, mini bully atheist to the saintly Christian. Now, Thomason isn't responsible for this, though she is responsible for liking his tweets and thus demonstrating some level of support, at the very least. So the second apologist continued to make a right prick of themselves, seemingly getting offended when I told them to piss off and only to return when and if they bothered to check out what actually occurred, as until then, they were simply wasting my time. By the way, this person has a habit of doing this from my experience with them. And if you're watching this brass, stop being such a fucking asshole. It really does get old to get pricks like you turn up, waste my time, only to demonstrate that they haven't put in the most basic effort into studying the topic. If I can read the Bible cover to cover several times to make sure my criticism is always on point, the least you can do is watch the damn video at the top of the thread that was also supplied directly to you by Godless Cranium when you kept pretending like it was on me to educate your incredulous hide. Get a grip and stop being so fucking lazy. And this is where the ice over the rabbit hole began to crack. Florida Line began sharing screenshots of other things SJ Thomason had said in public to other people, the first one of which was the title sake for this video. Following on from Thomason posting a quote by Mother Teresa and a commenter noting the abusive things Teresa did, Thomason stated, and I do quote, Be careful. Look what happened to Hitchens. 1 Peter 3.16, end quote. Now the reference passage states, quote, Keep me a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander, end quote. So clearly she believes Hitchens lied about all the evidence, not only his work, but work carried out by others exposed in how Teresa not only tortured people in her dying houses to gain confessions before allowing them to die, but also funneled all money donated by a variety of people because everyone, regardless of doctrine, religion, faith, political system, thought she was doing a good thing, funneled all of their money back to the Vatican, including money from genocidal warlords who hired her to provide good PR, a service she was only all too willing to give. But that's not the most disturbing thing. The most disturbing thing here is, Hitchens died of cancer. This Christian apologist, this S.J. Thomason, is rather literally threatening people with the threat of cancer or worse. And I know what apologists are going to say. How can I jump from, look what happened to Hitchens, to the threat of cancer, and the answer is very simple. When the person raised this issue, then and there, Thomason did nothing to say that this was not what she was saying, but instead doubled down, going so far as to state, quote, he steered more than a million to hell, had to stop, end quote. This is so fucking sick, I don't know where to begin. I honestly don't. There was nothing more I could think of to add to make what S.J. Thomason said any worse. That was until I saw a wonderful comment by Jim Trott, who chimed in with, quote, Strange theology. God is permitted to stop Hitchens, but not the Holocaust or a child being repeatedly raped, then buried alive. End quote. I think that about says it all. From this, S.J. Thomason, if nothing else, most certainly refuted the existence of any God with any sense of justice, major or minor, with the crap she spewed. But it continued with, quote, Maybe it's not his character that needs to be strengthened, but the character and empathy of all who've seen that popular photo. End quote. 
Well, that's rather mundane. What on earth am I on about? Well, whilst the photo is hidden from the thread now, thankfully, Florida Line has screenshots from much earlier, which... Yeah, the photo was Kevin Carter's struggling girl, taken during the Sedan Famine in 1993, that was made famous not only for winning the Pulitzer Prize, but ultimately leading Carter to commit suicide four months later. That's right, this apparently compassionate Christian apologist thinks God stars entire nations to get you, sitting safe at home in your first world nation, to think about doing something. The way that this was stated so casually as a response to criticism is just vile. But it's all part of the S.J. Thomason show. She needs everything to bend to her will, her desires, and if you refuse to do such, then she'll just force her way through anyway. Now, I'd like to end with this tweet from her that summarizes all of this and her position on atheists in general. She stated, quote, Atheists are atheists for two reasons. They've either been broken or they're doing something they shouldn't be. Jesus overcame, you can too. End quote. Now, in my previous video, I was pretty scathing. I saw her for what she is a cold, apathetic, opportunistic monster of a person who is all too happy to hurt people for her own gain. But upon further reflection, I can see that I really had no idea as to just how terrible she really was. But now I do, and so do you. Dear S.J. Thomason, terrible doesn't cover it. Hi there. I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, and Alexander Williams. Your support has ensured this channel's ability to grow over the years. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe, hit the bell icon, and follow Essence of Thought on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, a humanist organization dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilizing language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's work to keep the space one which upholds the values of humanism. Thank you.